Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. As I mentioned just a few moments ago, our text is taken uh, from today's gospel lesson and really the greater context of, of what is taking place surrounding uh, this particular verse. But the, the verse kind of sets the stage of what we're looking at here this morning. From the 16th chapter of John's account of the gospel, the 33rd verse, where it simply reads, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This is our text, dear family and friends in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'd like to begin by asking you a question, and the question is very simple, simply this. Have you ever paused from the craziness of your everyday life and taken, I mean, really taken an assessment of what is going on in this world in which we live? Well, if you have, no doubt, I tell you, it's tough not to be pessimistic about life. Think about it. No matter what the government is telling us, there is still a pretty tough uh, economic outlook that we're wrestling with right now, isn't it? It seems as if budgets are being cut, jobs are being lost, companies are closing and moving their business overseas, and many of the things that we bought yesterday are already old and obsolete here today. On the news, whenever you turn it on, we're, we're just constantly being bombarded with news about Al-Qaeda and ISIS and, and what that means for us as Americans and, and how that impacts our daily lives. The stock market, well, that's seeming like it, it has rebounded somewhat, but I took a look and, and between Thursday and Friday the stock market was down over 300 points. So we're all kind of holding our breath, just waiting for the next crash and what that means to retirement accounts, investments, and, and savings, and the like. And on top of that, it doesn't really take all that long to see that it seems as if Christianity is being attacked on every single front. Families, man, they are in disarray. I tell you, it, it is really tough out there in this world in which we live. And, and I didn't even say a word about the primaries or the upcoming election and the whole fiasco that that involves. But thinking about that, wouldn't it be kind of nice if, if, uh, if life would come with a potential list of side effects? Wouldn't it be nice that every single baby that was born had one of those little warning labels attached to them saying that life can be fun, filled with all kinds of fun and excitement, with adventure and joy. However, there are side effects to living these lives in which we live that include illness and broken relationships and betrayal and sorrow and loss and disappointment and heartache and yes, which would even lead eventually to death. It would be helpful to have that list early on, would it not? But in all actuality, we, we have been given that list early on. Jesus, in today's text from John chapter 16, simply says that in this life, there will be troubles. It does not say that there may be troubles, or there could be troubles, or there might be troubles, but it says there will be trouble, that storms will come your way. But even though that's the case, we can't help but wonder why. Why are these side effects in life taking place in the world in which we live? Why is there so much suffering and so much evil and so much pain in this world in which we live? In reality, those are, I believe, some pretty good questions. But these questions are really nothing new. These are the same questions that have been asked for, for generations before us. If we dig into God's word going back to the Old Testament, we can find Job. And we know Job's story well, how he had heartache and disappointment, experienced death and loss and so much more. And, and, and as we look at his story, how many times as we turn those pages of scripture do we find that Job is asking, why is this taking place to me, O Lord? Why is this happening? And then you flip to the Psalms, to some of the Psalms that David had written with all the things that he went through and some of the other psalmists, and, and they ask that same question. They say, why, O oh Lord, how long, O oh Lord, do I need to endure this? And we see that time and time again throughout Scripture. And we start looking at our own lives. 
some of those things that many of us have lived through over the course of our lives. There was World War I and World War II, and, and then, of course, there was the Holocaust. It was connected with that and, and all the tragedy from that, those events. And then we, we seemingly hear about constant outbreaks of, of diseases and the deaths that come along with that, as, as well as the random acts of terrorism that are taking place around the world and wondering when it's going to hit next door. And when these things happen, are we not found in a united voice asking, why are these happenings, Lord? Why are these things taking place? Why do so many bad things happen to so many good people? We've all been there, haven't we? And, and I bring this out to you today, not to be a Debbie Downer and say, wow, you guys are going to leave here feeling a whole lot worse than, than when you came, but it's it's to see that we do live in some challenging times and we found, are found asking the questions, why are some of these things the way that they are? Why uh, we have to endure hardships when, when so many other people seemingly have gotten a pass on those difficulties in their lives? Or, or why, if God loves us, does he allow such bad things to happen to us and, and to those that we really love the most? The sad fact of the matter is there's some some things that we're just never going to fully understand why these things happen to us. We're just not able to see the, the larger picture. Some of these things are hidden from our sight. Now earlier in this week, as I was putting this message together, I couldn't help but recall an event that took place seven years ago this past February. That's when my father-in-law, Orville Popke, uh, Carol's dad, uh, passed away. And uh, we as a family and all the family came together up in, in Michigan and, and we were there for the funeral and that and then the burial was at a military uh, cemetery west of Detroit and, and after the committal service, uh, Molly and Aaron and I got in the car and we were heading and Aaron and I were going to drop Molly off at Concordia in Chicago before we made a U-turn, came back to Napoleon so we would be uh, back here in time for services on Sunday morning. We dropped Molly off, no problem. And then as soon as we made the, the U-turn, as soon as we just about hit uh, the state line of Indiana, it started to snow. No big deal, driven through snow before. But the snow continued to worsen. Uh, Aaron, she felt comfortable enough where it wasn't all that long before she was asleep on the seat right next to me. And it continued to snow and snow and the conditions worsened almost to the point where, where it was white out conditions and well it, where it was white out conditions and it was already dark at this point so it was very difficult to see uh, to begin with and, and uh, as things continued to worsen and you know how it is when you're driving in the snow you just kind of follow the tracks of the, the vehicle that are in front of you because those paths are, are dry there or whatever at least there's paths on the road well it was snowing so much that those paths of the tires of the vehicles that travel that way before me that they disappeared and it was dark and if any of you have traveled on on the turnpike before you know that that there's deep ravines there and i was afraid that without even knowing it that i would slowly but surely veer off track head down one of the ravines and that aaron and i would be stuck down there and nobody would even know that we were there so needless to say my prayer life was greatly strengthened in those moments that seemed like months really we pr I prayed that something would happen and that it would happen soon before something bad took place. And then, much to my delight, I looked in the rearview mirror and there were some headlights coming up from behind me from, from a vehicle that seemed to be move, moving at a, at a steady but confident pace. And, and sure enough, it wasn't all that long before that vehicle was next to me and it was a semi. And it went past me and then it pulled in in front of me. And I knew at that moment that if I kept my eyes focused on those taillights, that, that I would be able to follow that individual and I would be heading in the right direction, that I would be led to safety and that everything would be okay because he was able to see something something that I was not able to see myself. Friends, the same thing could be also said of each of us when storms hit our lives, when bad stuff happens. Oh, we might not be able to make out all the peripheral stuff as to why these things are taking place the way that they are. Our vision probably will be many times is limited because we can't see everything that has taken place. The reasons may be hidden from our view, but rather than focusing our attention and giving our full devotion uh, to that question why, 
it would be certainly more helpful if we would focus our attention on what it is that we're going to do when those bad things do happen to our lives, when, when things don't go the way that we plan. Because I can tell you this, that God's Word, God's Word will shed some light on, on the storms that we are experiencing in life. In the midst of the most difficult and trying times, He will do that. And if we follow the light of God's love, I can assure you this, that we will be heading in the right direction and that things are going to be okay because He is leading us each and every step away, receiving that safety and security that can only be found in the Lord. Now, if you ever have or if you are experiencing some of those storms of life, those great difficulties in your life right now, I tell you, this is a great section of Scripture. I'm not just talking about John chapter 16 that makes up our text, but I'm talking about the greater context of that, going back from John chapter 13 all the way through John chapter 17. I want to kind of give you a quick overview as far as what's taking place to lead us to this, where, where Jesus said what he did. In John chapter 13, that was the night when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And it was at that point that Judas he had already left the room because he was going to betray Jesus. And Jesus already knew that Judas was going to be doing that. Jesus knew the storm was coming. And it is here that Peter said, Lord, all the others, they probably will leave you, but not me, man. I'm going to follow you. You can count on me. I would never desert you. I would never leave you. I will stand beside you no matter what. Well, we know how that worked out for Peter, don't we? Then in John chapter 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples, telling them about how he's going to be going and preparing a place for them, that he's going to be leaving them, that he's going to get things ready, and then he's going to be sending the Holy Spirit to empower them so that they will then be able to uh, go out and, and share the hope that is found in Jesus, and they're going to be able to minister and care for other people, the other children of God. And then in chapter 15, uh, Jesus is telling them a passage I know that we're all familiar with, even though we might not know that that's the particular chapter. But John 15, that's where we find that Jesus tells his disciples and us that he is the vine and we are the branches. That if we remain in him, that he's going to give us uh, all that we need. He's going to give us the nourishment that we need uh, so that we are able to blossom as his people and, and help other people be grafted to him and, and so that they'll be strengthened and encouraged as well. And then in John 16, today's text, Jesus prepares his disciples. He said, you know, I'm going to leave you guys. I'm going to die. Things are not going to be the same, and storms are going to be coming. Some tough times are going to be on the horizon. And then in John chapter 17, Jesus prays for the church, and, and it is what's called Jesus' high priestly prayer. And he stands before the Father and intercedes on, on our behalf. And so that's kind of the quick overview of, of what's taking place in these chapters surrounding that. And then the verses leading up to today's text where it is, Jesus, again, is telling his disciples he's going to be leaving them, that, that he's, going to, he's telling them about his death, that, that he's going to die. And he says that storms are going to be coming, that challenges are going to be on the rise, that hardships are going to hit their lives. He says, but even though these things are going to be happening, I know these things are going to be happening. Even though, don't worry about it, because I'm not going to be that far away. As a matter of fact, I want to be right there with you. You may not see me. Your, your vision of me will be somewhat limited, but I'm going to be with you each and every step of the way. And, and that's part of our problem. That when these storms hit our lives, when challenges arise and difficulties come, that many times we are unable to see beyond the current difficulty that we are wrestling with to be comforted by the presence of God. That God is always there with us each and every step of the way. It made me think about uh, something that I read some time ago uh, by John Maxwell. Not sure if you know who John Maxwell is, but he's, he's kind of a leadership guru. He's written, I don't know, hundreds of books on, on leadership. But he, he told this story, and I think it's very fitting for us here today. He said, imagine, and you can go ahead and imagine as well. He said, imagine, if you will, that you went out one night with your family and you had a great time when you were at this restaurant. And then when, when you were done, you were getting into your car, you turned your car on, the lights came on, and the lights would shine several hundred feet in front of you. He said, now imagine uh, with that, that they shine, but you can't see your house, obviously, when those lights are shining, because your house is further away than that. And then he said, what would happen if you said, I turned the lights on, but I, I can't see my house, so I'm not going? kind of ridiculous to, to think that. But then he continues on. He said, you, rather than not going anywhere, you just use the light that is available to you. 
You start moving the car in the right direction, what happens with that light? Instead of here, as it moves, it continues to go and continues to shine the way several hundred feet ahead of you at a time. As you move, uh, the light of the car moves as well, and it gives you that light that you need at that particular moment. That's the same way it is during the storms of life that we experience. Jesus said, you're not quite ready to understand everything, but I'll tell you this, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because I'm going to give you just enough light for you to see where you are at that particular moment. And what you need to do is just keep on walking. And that's part of our problem, isn't it? When the storms hit, when the difficulties rise, many times we say, God, I'm not going to be walking if you're not going to show me more light. And then we stop. And what happens with that car and the light? As you're moving, the light continues to move. But when you stop, guess what? That light stops with it as well. You're no longer able to continue to see beyond where you are at that particular moment. And Scripture says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Notice it says, as you walk in the light. It does not say as you stop in the light or as you stand there, but we need to continue to walk in that light. And God continues to shine the way ahead of us. That brings us to verse 31 where Jesus said, do you now believe? In other words, he's saying, do you guys trust me? I know what it is that I'm talking about. Some tough times are going to be coming, but don't let these tough times get the better part of you because I'm going to be right there with you all the way to the end. And that brings us to verse 33, where it says, I have said these things to you uh, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, he's telling his disciples that in a short period of time, things are going to change drastically. He's no longer going to be with him. He's go and, and that uh, he's going to be taking taken away, and that he's going to die. And that he's telling them that they really need to know what it is that they're going to be doing when those tired ships hit, so then that way that they are properly prepared when the storms come. And he says they're going to scatter, they're going to desert him, they're going to betray him. And then, at that point, he assures them and all of us as well. He says, all of you, talking to you guys too, me too. He says, all of you are going to scatter. All of you are going to desert me. And when you fail and when you fall short of the glory of God, when you don't measure up, when you sin, when you have promise after promise was made that you weren't going to do that, Jesus said, I know all of these things are going to happen to you and with you and in you and through you, but because you know that I know that, you are able to have a certain measure of peace, a peace that this world cannot give, and you can have that peace because of me. Because I assure you that, that even when you fail, I'm not going to stop loving you. My love for you is unconditional, and it will not falter, and it will not fail. Now, I'm not sure how you react to that message, that God's love for you is unconditional, that it will not falter, and it will not fail. I'm not sure how you respond to that, but I tell you, that does me a whole bit of good. It does me a ton of good. It has an amazing impact on me to know that God loves me not because of who I am or what I do or what I'm able to accomplish or what I have or any of that stuff, but God loves me no matter what, that God's love for me is always faithful, that Jesus will never fail, and knowing that helps in any time and everything that comes my way. Now with that, uh, to try and tie it all together about this peace that we can have in Jesus, uh, there's an individual by the name of Archibald Rutledge. Name is not really all that significant. He was an American poet and, and he was an American educator. And he tells of a time when he was up in his study and as he was in his, I don't know if he had writer's block or whatever, but he kept looking out the window and he noticed that there was a bird outside his window that was building a nest in the tree uh, next to his study. And for the better part of the day, he watched that bird go from the tree down to the ground to pick up some grass and all that other stuff, bring it up, build that nest, and go back and forth, back and forth all day. And then it just so happened that when evening fell, there was a terrible storm, some amazing wind, uh, some driving rain. 
And the next morning when he got up, he, he thought to himself, I wonder, I wonder how that bird's nest survived over the night. Well, it didn't. It blew from the tree, and he found it. As he looked out the window, he saw it on the ground, all scattered apart, not doing what it had originally been built to accomplish. And as he sat there and all kinds of things ran through his mind, his eye then caught the bird. For the bird was not there standing next to that busted up nest, worrying or fretting or mourning about what could have been or what should have been. He saw that that bird was on the ground getting some grass, going back up to the tree, starting all over with a great deal of confidence that was there. What a great reminder for all of us that we, in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our frustrations, are able to forge ahead even in the aftermath of these storms because we know that we can experience a peace that this world cannot give, a confidence that can only come from the Lord, that he can only provide, assuring us that in the midst of these things, things are going to be okay because he's with us each and every step of the way. And that's all we really need to know. That in the Lord, all is well. In his name, amen. And now, may the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. We continue.